so you have finally learned how to make your own samples and now you want to put some drums over it, but then you actually realize that you have no idea how to get a good drum bounce. Or maybe you are just using other people's loops, which is completely fine by the way, but you're still struggling with your drum bounce. Well, then I'm here to help you guys out because today we're going to talk about something that's dear to every producer's heart, which is of course, drum bounce. But I'm <laughs> yeah, but all jokes aside guys today I'm literally gonna show you guys some of the most fundamental stuff you need to know when it comes to drums And I'm also gonna show you guys some super cool tricks secrets and hacks you can implement to get a crazy drum bounce And it's also going to make your beats hit super hard, which is probably gonna make your neighbors complain But let's just ignore them for now and let's get straight to the video All right, so now we are here in FL Studio 21 as you guys can see Obviously before I even show you guys how to actually get a good drum bounce I just want to preference one super super important thing and that is to make sure that you guys use good quality drum sounds i know it may sound a little bit dull but it's seriously like a super important step because if you're using some trash sounding drum sounds no matter how cool your bounce is it's not gonna sound good so just make sure you are using some good quality sounds in my case i'm obviously gonna use my euphoria bundle kit it literally has all the drum sounds that i'm using in every single one of my beats so that's what i'm personally using but you can obviously use whatever Ever drums you want just make sure it's some good drum sounds so since i'm using the euphoria bundle kit i also have a midi kit and a sample pack and since the point of the video is obviously to show you guys how you can actually get a good drum bounce i'm not going to spend any time on the melody so we're just going to drag in a sample from the pack and i think i'm going to pick this number 12 over here This is actually a sample that I've made with a live guitar. So I'm literally just going to drag this in. Make sure we adjust the BPM to the correct one so it's not completely off time. All right, so we have this sample over here. Now I'm just going to put a pattern underneath each part. And by the way, I just pitched up the sample by three semitones over here. So to start off with, I personally actually like starting off with the claps. So I'm going to go into the kit and I'm just going to pick this go-to clap over here. Why? Because it's literally my go-to clap as it says in the name. So we're just going to drag this in over here. All right. So now one of the most fundamental things in FL Studio when it comes to drum bounce. I know this is just super, super basic, but if you're like completely new to music production, you might not know about this. And trust me because I was actually doing this wrong for a while. So if you're working in something over 100 BPM, which is usually called double time. In this case, like I said, we work in 147. You want to put the clap on the second gray one over here. So you see we have a gray part, we have a yellow part, we have a gray part, and then another yellow part over here. So just make sure you are putting it on the first pad over here. You can do this for each one. And now we have a super simple clap pattern. This is something you should pretty much do in every single one of your beats. Obviously, if this is the vibe you're going for, if you are making some EDM stuff or maybe even some pop or something like that, this would obviously be a little bit different. But for the standard trap sound we're going for, this is what you want to do. Now, like I said, this was if you're in double time, so over 100 BPM. If you are actually under 100 BPM. You don't want to put it on the gray one. You actually want to put it on the first yellow one like this. So just put this on every single one if you are working in under 100 BPM. Now I'm just going to go back to 147 and I'm going to show you guys a cool little trick you can actually do with the claps. So since we are putting in each one over here, I actually sometimes like to add an additional clap either here or here. This is just to give it a little bit of a different type of bounce. Now, if you're going to do this, there is one crucial step. You actually want to open up the piano roll and you want to make sure that the velocity down here of this additional clap is a bit lower than the rest. This again is just going to give it a little bit of a smooth bounce to it. And so as you can hear it's kind of different but it still has a cool bounce. Now for one of the most important things when it comes to drum bounce, this is actually the hi-hats. So I'm just going to drag in this attack hi-hat right here. And since I obviously have a MIDI kit included in the Euphoria bundle kit, I'm just going to drag in one of the MIDIs and actually try to explain why it kind of gives the beat a little bit more bounce. Now before I actually drag in the hi-hat, there are two different ways you can go about the hi-hats. I know this shows four, but it's actually two. <laughs> so the way I see it, you can either have like a slow type of hi-hat pattern or you can have your standard 
two step type of hi hat pattern with some cool little rolls here and there. Now, for the slower hi hat, you have a lot of space in between the hits, but you kind of add a little bit more rolls as well, just so it kind of fills out the space, but still leaves a lot of between. So you can have a lot of space in between the hits, but you also want to add a little bit of rolls here and there, so you can kind of fill out the space as well. So I'm going to give you guys a quick example of that one. So if I just drag in this number 38 Hayat MIDI over here, if we even just extend these all the way, you can see there is a lot of space in between right here. But it still has some of these rolls over here, so it kind of gives it that groove. Let's take a listen. So the hi-hat pattern sounds pretty cool, but you might hear the problem for this type of spaced out pattern. So the thing is, if you are using a spaced out pattern, you really want to fill out that space with different type of perks, snares, rims, and open hats. So you can't really catch a bounce until you have added some more elements. But now if you add a little bit more of a busy hi-hat pattern like this one, it already has a bounce point. Yeah, so as you guys can probably hear, it already catches a bounce, but it's way busier. So if you are using these way more busy hi-hat patterns, you don't really want to go overboard with your perks, rims, and snares, because it's kind of going to fill out way too much space of the beat, and it's literally just going to make it sound super messy. Now I know this hard pattern might seem a little bit intimidating or hard to make, but it's actually not as hard as it seems. So let's just delete this and start off with this simple two-step hi-hat pattern. The first step that I really like doing is just by having two hi-hat hits over here, and then I just highlight the second one and turn the velocity down a little bit from the first one. Now we can just copy this over so we have a simple two-step all the way. Now we want to make some cool rows that fit together with the sample. So for this, the magnet tool over here is pretty much your best friend. I usually like starting off in the cell mode just so I can kind of do these small rolls over here they are super simple and then i'm just adding them somewhere in between just so we can get a little bit more of a groove to the hi-hats so i'm gonna add one over here and i'm also going to add one over here so it's pretty much the same for the both of these bars So you can pretty much look at this as step one. And now we can go on to step two to add some more complex rolls. As for this, I just like to highlight one note I feel like a roll would fit on. And then I just hold Alt on my keyboard and press U. As you can see, this is going to bring up the chopper. Now you can adjust this module over here to see how much you want to chop it. If you want a little bit of a faster roll, I like chopping it down here. If you want a more slower one, you can obviously chop it up over here. Now I'm just going to leave this time you'll over here. But I feel like this is a way too big of a roll. So I'm just going to delete the four last notes over here extend this one all the way and now i'm just gonna make it roll up a little bit with the velocity So that right there is pretty much step two on how you can make some even more complex rolls. Now for step three, it kind of fits because you want to go into the magnet tool and this time you actually want to pick third beat. This right here is seriously going to give it some more bounce because you're switching in between the beats. Now for this example, we can do a little bit of a triplet roll at the end over here. As long as you have your magnet tool on third beat, you should pretty much be good. Right, so now we have done a cool little triplet at the end right there. As you can see, I've already started to lower the notes over here. But for step four, you want to add some lower notes as well. One of the best ways to do this is actually just to go to this brush tool over here. And you can actually just hold shift on your keyboard. And it's literally just going to drag the notes from above down to whatever note you're holding. So we can just do some slight adjustments. If you hold shift maybe here and click here, just to add a little bit more groove to the hi-hats. So this right here is pretty cool. So if you want to take this even a step further, you can obviously add some lower notes down here as well, just by yourself. Just make sure you highlight these and turn the velocity way down over here, just so these lower notes don't overpower the normal hi-hat pattern we have.
Yeah. That right there is pretty much the way to make some cool and bouncy hat patterns. Now again, I'm just gonna drag in a normal MIDI from my pack. And now I'm gonna show you guys some cool little secrets you can do with your hi-hat to get a little bit more bounce to them. Now, if you actually just open up the hi-hat over here, then we can actually go over to this wrench tool over here at the end. And if you look over here on time, I usually like to turn this shift knob up just a slight bit. It's just gonna make the hi-hats go a little bit off time. Not too much, so it's completely off, but just a little bit so it has a nice flow to it. Now with this, there's also a super cool trick you can do with this delay over here. If we just turn on ping pong and feed the delay a little bit, so you can hear it, this is way too much. So just add a little bit, turn down the echo. And you kind of get a nice little delay in the background. This delay knob actually works very well if you're making some hi-hat patterns for a cool little drill beat. So if you guys are making a lot of drill beats, this delay button actually works perfectly for that. Now I'm just gonna switch out the hi-hats to a little bit more of a spaced out hi-hat pattern, just so I can show you guys how you can actually create a cool bounce with the different type of elements as well. So to start off with, adding an open hat on the first hit and a little bit later in the beat as well, really helps to emphasize the normal hi-hat pattern. So let's add a little bit of a longer one for the first hit. Then I'm also just gonna add a smaller one we can add later in the beat. Yeah, that's really cool right there. So you can hear how the open hat kind of extends out the last hit of the normal hi-hat pattern we have. Since there is a lot of space in between these two hi-hats, putting an open hat right there is pretty much the perfect place you want it. Now a cool little trick with open hats is that you can actually also add a little bit of a reverse open hat. I feel like this is a super underused drum that actually goes perfectly with this trap sound. The thing with these reverse open hats though is that you really want to put them right before a clap. Just so it kind of fades into the clap hitting. So we can put one right here and see how that sounds. Yeah, so that right there is pretty much perfect. So you can hear how it hits right before the clap. Right there. Now let's add some perks, rims, and snares. All right, so for snares, a super cool trick to remember is actually that they go really, really well right after a hi-hat roll. So as you can see, we have a very busy hi-hat roll right here. So I'm just gonna add a snare over here and it's really gonna emphasize the bounce. I'm gonna add one right here as well. Now for the rims, you definitely want to be super subtle. So I'm pretty much just adding them on the start of the beat usually right here. This is if I want to be a little bit subtle, but still add some groove to the beat. So we can just have the rims at the start. They're super subtle but they definitely add the bounce. Now the perks are a little bit different because as you can hear, you have a lot of different sounding perks. Now I usually like going for perks that really fit together with the beat. So since this is a wavy type of guitar beat, I really just want to keep it super simple with the perks. So you don't want to go overboard with it. And you also want to choose some sounds that sound pretty simple. Now a super cool trick with the perks is actually to put them on and right after the clap. I just lower the velocity on the second one a little bit. All right, so now I think it's time we add the 808. As for the 808, I'm gonna be choosing, it's gonna be this gear 808 over here. First things first, just make sure you turn off loop points, then just go over to this envelope over here and make a square. So we're just gonna put the hold all the way up and turn these all the way down. Then go to the wrench tool and hit cut self. This is literally just gonna make you have full control over the 808. So as long as you hold it, it's gonna play. And as soon as you let it go, it's gonna stop playing. So I actually also have a lot of 808 meters in the kit. So let's just drag one in and I'll explain explain the bounce behind it.
right? So there are a couple different ways you can go with the 808s. Me personally, I actually like to leave a lot of space in between the 808 hits, but I know for some different type of beats, you want to have a lot of hits all the time, but usually you should leave a lot of space in between the hits. You can have it a little bit busy at the start and then make sure it slows down, or you can have it a bit slower at the start, but make sure it kind of ramps up towards the end. So for this one, I have a pretty quick bounce at the start, but then I kind of leave a lot of space towards the end over here. Then again, we have the same type of busy start, but right towards the end on the second bar over here, I like to have a little bit of a roll just so we can make sure the presence of the 808 is really felt. So you can also have something like this, where you have a lot of space in between on the start, but then as you can see towards the end right here, it really ramps up and kind of hits all the time. This right here is a super cool bounce. And again, make sure you guys put the 808 on the root note of the melody. On the last example, I was completely tripping because I was putting this up on the F when the F actually doesn't start before the second bar. Now I obviously heard it, so it made a lot more sense, but just make sure you put it on the root note so it doesn't throw off the bounce of the beat. Now lastly, for the kicks, we can just add in this kick right here. So usually what I like to do is just copy this same exact 808 pattern over to the kick, but a cool little trick you can do with the kick to give it a little bit more bounce is actually not to have it hit right where the 808 hits so as you can see over here we have an 808 hit right there and i'm actually just gonna put it a little bit in front of the 808 just so it gives it some more bounce take a listen to how it sounds yeah this bit is fire by the way i think that's pretty much it guys that right there is pretty much everything you need to know when it comes to drum bounce. Now, if you guys want to check out the drum sounds that I've used in this video, they are actually all in my Euphoria bundle kit. It actually has over 200 plus drum sounds. It also has a sample pack with 30 royalty free samples made from scratch by myself. And it also has a MIDI kit where you have 50 different 808 MIDIs and 50 unique hi-hat MIDIs you guys can drag and drop straight into your beats. And even as a bonus, if you guys like the FL Studio theme I'm using over here, I've actually also included the same exact theme and FL Studio template that I personally use. So if you guys want to check it out, it's of course on my website, it's bbmarco.com and it's obviously linked down below. Besides that, I thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time.